Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to our review of Star Wars Squadrons, available on PC, PS4 and Xbox One. We're going to tell you everything you need to know before you play. But before I do, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell for more video game reviews every single week. You're not going to want to miss it. EA and Star Wars had a pretty rocky start to their relationship. Underwhelming titles and a shamelessly excessive use of microtransactions led to a level of fan backlash that would go on to break records. Yet to their credit, the game publisher people love to hate seemed to listen to the feedback. In the past few years, we've seen the release of the exceptional Jedi Fallen Order and Battlefront 2 just scrapping microtransactions altogether, becoming one of the most polished multiplayer shooters available today. These factors have helped EA quietly redeem themselves in the eyes of many fans, and they once again seem like a safe pair of hands for the Star Wars IP. That's why anticipation for Star Wars Squadrons has been at a fever pitch since the first trailer dropped. The first dedicated Star Wars Space Fighter game since 2003's Rogue Squadron 3 Rebel Strike, it had us salivating for intense dogfights, iconic fighter ships, and that trademark series charm with high fidelity modern graphics. But does it live up to the hype, or does it crash land quicker than Porkins? Watch on to find out. Firstly, do not expect an easy ride. This is a true flight sim, and offers a very advanced experience, particularly for a title with such a widespread mass appeal. Not only will you have to familiarize yourself with the pros and cons of each of the eight available starfighters, but you'll also have full control of your ship's various systems in the heat of battle. You can select to divert power to your speed, power or shields depending on the situation, either using presets or controlling things yourself to a single point value, if you're feeling particularly bold. But if you're anything like me and haven't played a real flight sim for a while, it can feel pretty overwhelming. I ended up as a fireball much more often than a galactic hero. Thankfully, the game defaults to the more basic system of management, creating, in my opinion, the perfect balance between combat action and strategic multitasking. You just have to give it time for it to become second nature. A good place to do this is in the story campaign. From a narrative perspective, like Battlefront 2, it offers a nice insight into the timeline following the Battle of Endor, helping to bridge the gap between Episode 6 and 7. Again, in a similar style to Battlefront 2, the story is told from the contrasting perspectives of both the Boy and Rebel Alliance as it becomes the New Republic, and the desperate, wounded Imperial forces. Fans of the Extended Universe will no doubt recognize key characters, such as Grand Admiral Sloan from the Aftermath novel trilogy, and Hera Syndulla from the Rebels TV show, as well as many other novels, she's pretty prolific. But as I say, for people not overly invested in the wider, sprawling Star Wars narrative, it still offers a chance to get to grips with the nuances of piloting your craft before you hop into multiplayer. The various objectives give you experience at the helm of different fighters, getting used to managing your ship systems, and much, much more. I'm getting bored of saying it, but yet again, like Battlefront 2, the real bulk of your playing time will be spent in multiplayer. This comprises of two main modes, Dogfight, which is your classic team deathmatch setup, and Fleet Battle, which is much more objective based, seeing you tasked with taking down enemy capital ships with the end goal of destroying their main flagship. Both offer a lot of high speed action, but I definitely preferred Fleet Battles, as they reminded me of the space battles from the original 2005 Battlefront 2. Good times. Good times indeed. It's in these multiplayer team matches that learning the ships becomes most vital. You'll need a good balance of high-speed fighters like your A-wings and TIE interceptors, heavies like your Y-wings and TIE bombers, as well as your support healers like the U-wing and TIE reaper. However, if you're new to playing, you can't go wrong with the iconic X-wing and TIE fighter, which offer the most well-rounded stats. 
Although playing online can be very punishing, it never felt unfair. And in our experience, the matchmaking seemed to be pretty good. You'll probably die a lot, but like a Soulsborne, there's always enough incentive to get back up and try to be that little bit better next time around. What's more, it's a relief to see that there's no microtransactions at all. Not even cosmetics for your ship and cockpit, of which there are a whole lot, can be purchased. Rather, they'll have to be unlocked the old fashioned way. And finally, while I played on a regular controller, there's plenty of different control setups to experience squadrons your own way. It has full VR support for both PC headsets and PSVR on PS4, which once you get past the almost unavoidable motion sickness, must be incredible. It also has full support for flight sticks, just for that little bit extra immersion. To wrap up, Star Wars Squadrons is an absolute delight, and a worthy successor to the original run of Rogue Squadron titles. It offers challenging yet fair gameplay that affords true fantasy fulfillment for anyone who used to pretend to pilot their own X-Wing as a kid. Definitely don't still do that, I promise. It's worth your time getting over that learning curve, as once you do, you'll never want to leave that cockpit again. But what did you think of Star Wars Squadrons? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more video game reviews every single week. See you next time.